If you know anything about lolcows, then you know that for some reason, a large portion of lolcows have a keen interest in Sonic the Hedgehog. Some of these lolcows I've already covered, most notably Christian Weston Chandler, but I've also covered a couple others such as Dylan Guptill and Animated James. The lolcow I'm going to cover in this video, known as Richard Cooter, also known as Son Maniac, is no exception to this. Richard's story starts in 2002, on a Sonic cartoon fan site, Fans United for Sat Am, or FUS for short. On this website, Richard would often whine and throw tantrums, annoying the users of the website, eventually leading to a ban. In order to try and get around this, Richard would make alternate accounts and continue posting, although it was very clear that it was Richard the whole time, leading to the creation of a banned user group called Son Maniac is a Loser, literally just to put his accounts in. However, after contacting the owner of FUS, Sonic, Richard was allowed back into the community. Upon his return to FUS, Richard began talking about how he had been commissioned to create a Sonic the Hedgehog movie by Sega. Whilst there had been discussion on Richard creating a Sonic movie, that is as far as it had went, as Richard hadn't even gone so far as to actually send in a proposal. He saw that the movie was in the pre-green lit stage and instantly jumped to saying that he had been commissioned. Richard kept talking about this, which annoyed the community, although one group in particular was more annoyed about this, with this being Sega themselves, who had to directly tell Richard to take everything down that he was talking about, as he was obviously in no way involved with the Sonic the Hedgehog movie. He then sadly revealed this to everyone on Christmas Eve in 2007. Things continued to get worse soon after, with Richard releasing the character sheets that he got some artists to create for the movie. The problem with these is that they were blatantly copied, as seen with this Robotnik picture. Upon being accused of stealing this design, Richard stated he had no knowledge of this. When proved wrong about this, he then blamed one of his associates for the plagiarism. This surprisingly didn't work, and the person he blamed responded in detail, talking about how Richard dismissed the artist's original attempts at Robotnik, and instead insisted that he essentially used someone else's work with very minor changes. As a result of this, Richard was banned from FUS, this time for good. Despite all this, this would not stop Richard from having another go at a Sonic movie, even with Sega being strictly against this. His first line of thinking was to try and hire the artists he had hired before, the ones who he had blamed for the stolen character sheets. They obviously said no, and actually made things worse for Richard. These artists had not been paid for their prior work, and so threatened Richard by telling him that they would tell Sega that he's attempting a Sonic movie without their approval. He then had to hide all traces of this from the internet so he couldn't be caught. That isn't to say he stopped though, he instead continued, now looking for artists on Craigslist. Richard's antics with Sega and the Sonic movie became so annoying to Sega that they had to send him this letter. This letter instructs Richard to never contact them again, otherwise they will be forced to take legal action due to his harassment of the company. If I'm being honest, this is quite an accomplishment. How does one person annoy a company so much that they have to actually request that they completely cease contact with them? It really is unthinkable. So while so far this has been quite a peculiar tale, it's not quite juicy enough. So let's get into some of the weirder stuff. At some point it was revealed that good old Richard here was a fan of wearing nappies, aka diapers, and being an adult baby. In this picture he talks about how they are plastic, thick and cute, and talks about how he can experience that baby feel he misses, which I just hate hearing about, I hope it makes all of you nauseous too. In June 2007, Richard uploaded a video to his YouTube account in response to a troll on a Weezer website. Pretentious indie snobs and pseudo-intellectuals of Weezer Nation, I come bearing a message of great concern regarding the recent activities coming from this community. For the last year, I've been the subject of a sick game that obviously hasn't diminished. Revealing information and depictions of my personal life have been exploited for the intent of someone's cruel, twisted joke. And considering that this has been a constant occurrence, I've decided to express my true feelings 
to, dis to display how much this fucked up message board has affected my life. Now a certain someone, namely, this is a gay man, apparently has an unhealthy infatuation with me. Are you shitting me up the ass? How fucking pathetic does someone have to be to constantly play teacher with a blog entry? It's the goddamn internet, not the Writers Guild of America. See, this is an example why a lot of people are leaving this particular community. It's full of arrogant fucktards that can't get off their high horse. It's a fucking blog entry, goddammit. Get on with it, man. My career is in potential danger, since you assholes, particularly this is a gay man, have been posting pictures of me on YouTube and spamming my IMDB boards. And you know what? It's even come to the point where they've actually crank called me. This immature bullshit has to stop and only proves how pathetic and unprofessional this message board is ran. I'm, I'm no longer asking, I'm threatening that you all cease and desist these junior highish antics immediately or I will take the appropriate action in getting Weezer Nation officially shut down. I'm dead fucking serious, cause this shit has gone to the point where it's jeopardized my business, my career, and even my life. As for you, this is a game man. Continue what you're doing. You may think it's hilarious how you have an arsenal of dirt that could quickly ruin my reputation, but just remember this. You're a sad excuse for a person, and I, sin and I sincerely feel sorry for you, that you must leech off the life of successful people like myself to mask your own depravity and jealousy. So Weezer Nation, go fuck your face through your asshole, you dicks. And for you, this is a gay man, you better hope we don't confront each other in a dark alley one day, because you'll find yourself on the ground. I'm dead serious. Now if you excuse me, I have a life to live. After the upload of this video, Richard was contacted by a man called Mark Jackson of the Department of Internet Accounts, Protocols, Evaluations and Reprimand, an obviously fake organisation which comically spells out Diaper, obviously making fun of Richard. Richard aligned with Diaper, attempting to take down the Weezer Nation message board until he realised a week later what the acronym of this alleged organisation actually was. Another infamous video by Richard here is actually one that is quite Chris Chan-esque. This video is about Sonic the Hedgehog 4, with Richard watching the trailer of it, giving his first impressions whilst with a Sonic the Hedgehog plush toy. Hey everybody, this is a Not Whole Resident. As you can see here, I am very pumped up about Sonic the Hedgehog 4. I've been getting tons of comments about it. The trailer was just released, and I'm gonna go ahead and watch it live here on YouTube. So here we go. You ready for this, buddy? We waited over, what, 16, 17 years for this? It's your long-awaited comeback, yay! Here we go! Sonic the Hedgehog 4! Yeah, Sonic 3, yeah! Oh, there's a motorbug! <laughs> Sorry, buddy, uh... This is not exactly what I anticipated. Here, why don't you sit over here? Let the, uh... Let the adult speak. What part of retro don't you understand? From the amount of concept art and the black-eyed Sonic you used in, Hedge in the Hedgehog Day banner, that immediately gives us old-school fans the impression that Sonic 4 would reflect the classic Genesis games. And I'm just not seeing it here. I mean, I'm not sure if you caved in to the little kitties again, because all I'm seeing here is a rehashed Sonic Rush game ported to the consoles. The same ugly, stretched-out, green-eyed Sonic fighting the modern-style Eggman. Is that what he's gonna be called, too? Dr. Eggman? Ugh! I'm so infuriated right now. So stressed out I can't even concentrate. This is Sonic! This is the classic Sonic! I bought this plushie in 1994! Look! Beady black eyes! What I'm seeing here, the same ugly, stretched out, bubblegum abomination I had to suffer through for the last decade! Ugh!
I, I am not even going to classify this as a legit Sonic 4 title. I am not even going to place this in the classic library of Genesis games. Hell no. Fuck that shit. This entire marketing hype did nothing but set us up for disaster yet again. And you know what's really sad? You know what's really depressing about this whole thing? I mean... I can't even speak here. I'm just lost for words. I'm looking at the trailer and I'm just... I don't know what to say. I mean, my reaction is is teetering on on insanity here. I, I mean, we've waited nearly six months for this game, and this is what you give us? I mean, this is depressing. This is pathetic. I'm sorry, Sega. You failed in delivering 3D games, and you failed in delivering 2D games. Fuck you. I'm done with this franchise. Sonic weeps for Sonic Team and everybody at Sega, because us old school fans, we had a lot of faith in what you had to show. And you let me and this poor guy down. And you're going to have to live with that for the rest of your life. Richard really gets annoyed at the fact that Sonic has green eyes, really similar to Chris and his obsession with Sonic's new blue arms. Although luckily, Richard never decided to attack people over the eyes of Sonic. At some point after 2008, he wanted to call a hitman on Spax 3, one of his former friends from the Sonic the Hedgehog community. This was a result of his Facebook being hacked and personal information being leaked from him. So, after the whole failing to create a Sonic movie, Richard finally managed to produce something towards a Sonic movie in 2011. A brief teaser for what was to come. Here it is. The fear in your eyes indicates weakness. And if I may quote Charles Darwin, the weak is preyed upon by the strong. Terminate him! Sonic! No, Tails. Get out of here, guys. Sonic, you can't be serious. He's too much of a match for you to fight alone. Now! Come on, Tails! It's about to get messy in there. Yeah, it's not really great, is it? It's, for the most part, poorly animated, and the voice acting is truly awful. It's definitely a good thing that nothing came from this. At some point around this time, Richard ditched his previous aliases of Son Maniac and A Knothole Resident and began going by Eyeside Tape and Rich Monk. Sadly, it seems as though all of the videos on the YouTube channel Eyeside Tape have been deleted, with none of them being archived, so I cannot talk about them nor show them. Although, from reading the Kiwi Farms thread, it appears to be heavily related to diapers. He apparently at one point even went to a playground with this attire. I'm sure you all want to hear even more about a grown man wearing a diaper and acting like a baby, so that's what I'm going to do. On his Tumblr account for his eyesight tape alias, he has revealed numerous things about his lifestyle, such as talking about how he's done it whilst wearing a diaper, is no longer attracted by normal women, and has had to hire working girls to satisfy his childish needs. Although, one thing that he does bring up, which is quite weird, you know, kind of, is that he spoke about having relations with a 43-year-old woman. Something that he reacted to with, "ew." Later, he talked about older women, comparing them to clucking hens, and moans about how they nag due to visits from his grandmother and his sister, and thus a reason he isn't attracted to older women. Now there is a lot more to talk about with Richard Diapers, such as this picture where he took some pictures with a working girl, taking care of him whilst acting like a baby. It's always nice to see evidence for stuff like this, isn't it? That this actually happens in real life. That people have to end up doing stuff like this, probably to get by. Anyway, in 2016, Richard came out as a trans-ager, revealing that he identified 
as an adult baby. Which doesn't even really make sense using the term trans in that way, but whatever. He even created a couple more Craigslist posts, revealing this and looking for people to join in on this fun with him, which is just gross. Around this time, he also started dressing more feminine whilst dressing as a baby for some reason. You know, I have this in most of my videos where I just don't understand why people would do this. It's not even like he's transgender or something. It doesn't even fit in with his fetish, it's just confusing. The only thing anyone can ever bring up is that there is a humiliation fetish at play here. But how often are these fetishes? The final funny thing to talk about Richard and his diapers is that in 2017, the children around his area found out about his diaper fun time. And with children being children, they began making fun of him. They continued doing this so much that Richard felt trapped in his own home for three straight days, which is really laughable as, you know, they're children. But that has to be one of the most humiliating things I've ever heard, as well as the fact that he made this public that possibly shows that he might actually have a humiliation fetish. In November 2021, accusations came from a former friend and associate, Longseer, accusing him of grooming. Although, at the time, Longseer was a man and thus Richard would not have had any interest, making me believe Richard at this moment in time. There isn't really much else to say about this situation, although it may still be ongoing. But, as of the 31st of December 2021, there hasn't been anything important enough to mention. This next section will be quite brief, but you'll see why I added it soon. Richard seems to have quite a keen interest in a specific Sonic the Hedgehog character, Sally Acorn. Some of his more recent videos show Sally, especially this most recent one, where it is just Richard walking around a park where he finds Sally and then the video just abruptly cuts for some reason. You drop this. <gasps> Nicole. The whole Rich Monk persona is probably based off his love for Sally, if I'd have to guess, as she is obviously a chipmunk too. Finally, I'll end off this part with this amazing picture of Richard dressed as Sally Acorn. It's just really good, isn't it? I'm pretty sure he went out in public wearing this too, which is embarrassing to say the least. Where is Richard Cooter now? He actually seems to be doing pretty well for himself. On his website at thirstybottle.net, he shows off his portfolio, creating many things for many different companies, such as Microsoft, Amazon, HP, and even Sega through Sega Hardlight. This is actually quite surprising to me, as lol cows tend to just waste away. So this is something I can actually give credit to him for. Richard has also hung up the Rich Monk alias in the new year, now simply going by Simply Rich. However, there is one last thing I do have to say about Richard, and that is that he keeps on moaning about people making fun of him for things that he did years ago, which is obviously an awful way to go about it. He really should just try and move past it as best as possible, which he partly has, as he hasn't done too much in the past few years since the iSide Tapes accounts. People are always going to laugh at the things he's done in the past, and that's his fault for doing them, not the people who still continue to laugh at them. Because things on the internet tend to stay on the internet, and that shouldn't change, even if it does make people like Richard upset. <laughs>